We're continuing the journey with our Amber Emerald deck here, currently undefeated, 8-0. and And before we get started, I just want to mention that a lot of editing goes into these videos because I have to record them live and then cut out the waiting segments. So they do take a long time to edit. So if you enjoy these videos, a like would be appreciated. And also, if you haven't already, make sure you check the description and subscribe to the dedicated Volcana channel if you're interested in future meta decks and gameplay. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at two matches. <laughs> So in this first matchup here, our opening hand is actually quite decent after we do the Volcana Mulligan. I don't remember what it's called, but the put back and the redraw. We're going second and we're up against an Amber deck, most likely the Mirror Match. And in the Mirror Match, whoever goes first has a huge advantage because they just get their high questers out earlier and you're dealing with that pressure early on. So we're already behind. The opponent starts off with a Stitch and a Lantern, which is going to make their characters cost one less when they exert it. Um, so we're going to actually mirror the exact same play. Uh, we're also going to be able to drop a Lilo. So this is the advantage we had over the opponent in that we were able to play the Lantern for two and also play Lilo for free, whereas the opponent just played Lantern and ended their turn. However, they do have a very strong play in um, shifting their Stitch, and now we have to deal with that. So we're in a bit of trouble because that Stitch is a problem. It's going to enable them to draw cards when they play low-level characters, as well as Quest for three, and it's just a big body. So it's a really, really good card, a really, really meta card. We play four of them as well, but obviously we haven't seen it. So while we did see the Stitch, I mean, we saw the Lilo, the opponent did see Stitch. We do have an answer, though, in the Mother Knows Best. I believe that's what it's called. Um, and we bounce back the stitch, which bounces back both the small and the big stitch. The opponent then reveals to play a Lilo instead of trying to go for the stitch overlay, which I don't think they could. Or well, actually, yeah, maybe they could because they can play stitch and then ink a card and then overlay for the stitch, right? Because it's shift four and they can reduce the cost by one with lantern. So yeah, if they had four mana, they could play it for three and play the stitch for one, right? But they opt not to. They opt to play uh, the Lilo on board, which is fine um they opt to take out our lilo with their stitch giving it one damage and then they quest with their own lilo they're trying to stay up with me now on, on in terms of questing power but we do have the setup with the simba protection and the lilo and with our own um one two two drop the duke we're going to take out their lilo as well so we're ahead in terms of questing power but obviously we're way behind in, in card advantage we do have the double lantern setup though which you're going to see on three ink only this is insane right on three ink only are we going to be able to close this out because we can't afford to ink cards at this point because we need all of the resource we can on board the opponent now overlays for their stitch and goes um, into my simba so it definitely served its purpose which is good we are going to be able to take that out with the duke since it already has three damage on it and then we're going to use both the lanterns to drop mad hatter for three instead of five and this puts a huge amount of pressure on board for the opponent because we're threatening six lore on board which is game so the opponent does have the genie though which is going to bounce back the mad hatter and it has evasive but that's fine we're just going to replay mad hatter and quest for um three so the opponent has to deal with like one of my characters um and my mad hatter they have to deal with one of my exerted characters and my mad hatter because i do have six quests on board as well like six lore so they do have another genie which bounces back the mad hatter again and they take out the lilo so they are only on five lore and you know we're, we're still ahead of the game so we're gonna go um stitch for two or sorry stitch for one putting us on just needing two for game and we put two double questers on board so even if the opponent had a third genie and is able to take out our stitch we still have game on board with either the cat or the lilo the opponent is desperately trying to draw something but in using up their ink here there's probably not much that they can do and they just end up scooping after the rapunzel draws them into nothing so if you haven't already make sure you have liked the video because this next one took a lot of time to edit the opponent took a pretty long time on each of their turns but you're gonna see us start off here pretty strong with an ink mickey which is pretty much the only reason we play in the deck and a drop of lilo the opponent starts off with an inked maleficent and befuddles the lilo back to my hand which is totally fine it just saves them a turn of getting quested for two on because we're going to play lantern on turn two and dropping the lilo for free with the lantern's ability to reduce the cost of a character by one you can see the timer came up for them there but they eventually end up dropping on uh dropping the broom uh, and uh passing turn uh after deciding to put the fuddle back with the broom so we draw uh, fin for turn which is actually really good because it's going to put a lot of pressure on the opponent to out it and get the card advantage back from me just a little bit in forcing them to discard a card if they challenge 
but seeing that they're on purple if they're on steel as well which you know obviously by now i know they're going to be able to out these cards with fire the cannons grab your swords and that can be a problem we do however have the simba protection for the lilo which is great uh the opponent ends up inking a friends on the other side which is like pot of greed and they do indeed have smash which isn't great for us because now the broom can take out lilo and this is a bad matchup for us right steel is a bad matchup for this deck so this is another instance of where i face up against a uh, like a steel deck that has the very low damaging uh cheap costing cards which really outs my board and that essentially counters the strategy so they do have another smash and i'm like oh man that's rough they get rid of my hans which is a three quester and then they opt to challenge with the broom so this completely wipes my board now the card advantage is four to one in hand um they only lose a broom but like i said the fin is going to claw back a little bit of advantage forcing them to choose and discard one card we do draw duke um, and unfortunately we have to ink it it would have been nice to not have to ink it and just play the stitch and then play the duke to draw one off of stitch but it's fine we do get our stitch on board the opponent ends up inking a captain hook and dropping a challenger jafar so at this point i can't risk questing with the stitch but i will exert the duke to draw one when i play it off of the stitch's ability and if they want to challenge the duke that's fine for me because then i can take out the jafar where it won't get challenger if it's exerted with my own stitch they drop a magic mirror and i'm like okay they are obviously struggling for playable high high costing cards we're both on five ink but i have double genie and with the lantern thankfully i can reduce the cost of genie from six to five drop it and put the jafar back they opt to play a friends on the other side and drop a prince eric because that's all they can really do they opt not to ink their jafar there so they're staying on five ink and i'm like well at this point since i'm gonna go up to like 14 lore i will just go ahead and drop another genie and put the challenger eric back to your hand so that you can't take out my duke uh, or put damage on my stitch and i'm just gonna pass on this because i'm gonna put you, like even if you have grab your swords it's not gonna be enough to out my whole board and sure enough they do have grab your swords which only deals with the duke um, and then they have no more ink that is playable. They're going to drop a Jafar and then just pass turn. And at this point, I don't even need to play anything. We're just able to quest for game winning 20 to 0, showing the power of this deck. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. Link to the dedicated Lokana channel is in the description.